Doc Ondar's Den of Antiquities looks to be the coolest shop coming to all of Batu in Black Spire Outpost. Let's take a look. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dano channel. I am Dano and I'm back with another deep dive hard look here at a Star Wars Galaxy's Edge shop. And we're going to be taking a look at Doc Ondar's Den of Antiquities. This shop looks amazing. It, it looks to be like it's more than a shop but more of like an experience. Now before we get into it, I gotta mention to you guys, especially for those who are new here, who just been searching on YouTube for Galaxy's Edge or Facebook or wherever, uh, I've been doing a little, you know, look at each of the different stores. We've done like how to build a droid, what the adopt a creature thing's gonna be at the creature stall, some of the like, places like uh, Black Spire Outfitters. So I'm looking at each shop and releasing these videos where I kind of go through and guess what I think the pricing is based on what current Shop Disney Parks pricing is and what current Star Wars toys and stuff costs. So we're kind of playing a Price is Right game to figure out what things will be just so we can prep so that by the time Galaxy's Edge opens up, we'll all be ready. So if you haven't already done so, make sure you use the force on that subscribe button. You hit the little bell notification. That way you don't miss anything. And if you can, thumbs up the video. Tell your friends, share it with the Star Wars or Disney Parks fan. Let's see what Disneyland.com has to say about this. Okay, let's read this. Doc Ondar's Den of Antiquities opening May 31st. It says there is an annual pass holder discount. That's great. Good. We're going to need it. Uh, it says shop for mysterious and unique galactic artifacts collected by a legendary antiquities dealer. Opening May 31st, 2019. Um, looks like we got some info on here. The galaxy's rarest treasures. Is that the oh this is multiple artwork. I only have I can't see it very closely. I think it's all just bits of the same picture here, which we'll look at in just a minute. Uh it does say the galaxy's rarest treasures. Hidden inside the den you'll encounter a rotating collection of unique items that include everything from jewelry to ancient tools to rare kyber crystals to statues, and even a collection of famous lightsabers. The eclectic assortment of goods comes from many different planets and eras. You'll want to explore every nook and cranny of the shop. Who knows what priceless riches you'll uncover. How Doc Ondor acquired all of these treasures, no one knows. Some secrets are better off kept, better off kept that way. Other secrets are better off kept for sale on the shelves of Doc Ondor's Den of Antiquities. Alright, what else does it say? A den of secrets owned by a mystery. A constant presence in his den, Doc Ondar resonates with something mysterious, enigmatic, and almost mystical. And so do the objects that he gathers. So he's in there. He's in there. He's an animatronic Doc Ondar in there. This sounds pretty amazing. Uh, his shop is packed with crates, boxes, and assorted carvings. And a close inspection reveals that each object has its own story to tell. I wonder if this is going to work with the app. You know, like all the, oh, you can probably scan stuff in the store. It's going to be like a whole thing just in the store. Okay. Uh, everything is carefully curated and arranged according to an unknown order. Oh, interesting. When you stumble upon an obscure item, you're left to wonder, did you discover it by chance, or were you meant to find it? That's really interesting. That's really interesting. Now, let's take a look at the... This is the concept art. And from what I've read in a couple articles, and we'll look at them, but from what I've read in the articles, it sounds like this, this concept art is pretty true to what we should expect. It's going to be very close, at least. Uh, so the first thing I'm noticing is at the very top up here... Is that a crate dragon skeleton just kind of like hanging up in the ceiling? That's awesome. I see a giant wampa. That's really cool. Um, it, on the far left, there's this like green looking canister. You know, that almost looks like on Solo. I, I can't confirm this, but on Solo, when they're on um, Dryden Voss's yacht, there's a guy playing, it's like a singer. There's the woman singer. And then there's the weird, like, blob thing inside of a canister. And it looks very much... It reminds me of that. So I wonder... Who knows? Who knows what's in there? There could be... Oh, I, I don't know. But there's a lot of cool-looking stuff. And it does look like it's filled, like, edge to edge with all kinds of neat things. I'm pretty I'm pretty excited for this. All right. Next up, we'll see what the next image we've got. Oh, there's Doc Ondar. There is Doc Ondar. So that's... I think that's just like another copy of him, of the anima, like the head for the animatronic. But he's going to be a full-size Ithorian. And and supposedly he's he's going to sp not speak uh, basic or English, but he's going to have someone there to interpret, I guess. I don't know. Before, before we get into all the lightsabers and everything, I got a little sneak peek of the lightsabers. I wanted to read something to you. Now, over on Inside the Magic, they've got an article. Uh, they got some information 
basically they're reporting it's like i'm reporting on what they're reporting and they're reporting in this article on what someone else is reporting so it's kind of a weird a weird cycle but i do have to give them credit this is from inside the magic i'll put a link down below to this actual article in case you want to read it yourself um but as we scroll down we start to see some stuff here it says one of their exciting experience found in the new land is dock under stand of antiquities where guests can experience a shop run by a hammerhead alien carrying lightsabers and various artifacts here's a look at the upcoming attraction so you're gonna find a bunch of different items lightsabers uh inside glass cases and a woolly wampa lurking in the rafters but be warned according to brady mcdonald now before i go further on brady mcdonald initially brady mcdonald said there was a report from a little while back saying that there was going to be overnight camping at disneyland for may 31st and throughout the reservation period till june 24th or whatever disneyland has come out and said no overnight is necessary they came out last week they put out a video saying hey we're not going to open up the parking garage for the most part until 5 30 in the morning you don't need to camp out if you have a reservation no need to arrive super super early if you have the 8 a.m we're going to let people in the esplanade esplanade at 6 a.m so you have like a little two hour early window if you really need it but they don't anticipate you needing to camp out overnight which is great because i didn't want to I'm driving out for four hours gonna get there i wanted to get my rest i didn't want to have to go and immediately camp out overnight especially after i paid for a hotel especially after these people paid to get the reservation they paid four or five hundred dollars a night for a disney resort hotel stay just to have to camp out that would ruin the whole point so either way this guy brady mcdonald had an article on the oc register saying that it would be camping out and disney's come out and said no so this guy's track record as far as galaxy's edge stuff i don't know what to make of it okay so just keep that in mind as we go forward um what else we got here so this is from brady mcdonald's where they got their information said you're going to want to watch your step in this shop as you don't want to mess with doc which could get you on his bad side this is interesting doc ondar is a force to be reckoned with said walt disney imagineering um manager or story editor margaret Carrison. he may be 245 years old but he's not feeble he's been around and he's very well connected he's a very dangerous guy so according to brady mcdonald doc's den will be the best place in all of black spire apples village to find intergalactic black market goods in the shop guests can find jedi and sith artifacts we've talked about that additionally the shop will stock pre-built legacy lightsabers yes so we'll get into that in a minute um it does mention shock oh wait 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 themed after star wars characters such as shock t and ahsoka tano that's the first time i've heard shock t mentioned as having her lightsaber so this this is an interesting revel i didn't know that i never noticed this huh i didn't think there would be a shock t lightsaber i bet there's not i'm just gonna say it right now i bet there's not but who knows you never know Okay, what else we got here? Disney released concept art of the new shop, which we've seen, which shows skeletal remains of extraterrestrials hanging from the ceilings, I pointed out. Uh, different aliens floating in glowing glass cylinders, also. Uh, upper balcony can also be seen featuring souvenir spoils from throughout the Star Wars galaxy. So this place is just going to be laden with Easter eggs everywhere you look. All right, there is an interesting thing here. He has such a large collection that everyone actually knows him, said Imagineering producer Brian Liu. He no longer has to travel because all his clients come to him instead. Interesting. McDonald explains that the name of the shop, Den of Antiquities, is a play on the fact that the shop traffics illegal interstellar goods. Oh. We knew that we wanted to meet Nathorian in our land. We just fell in love with him from the beginning because his story is that he's the gatekeeper of the black market. This is cool. McDonald reports from his recent construction tour, say uh, plastic sheeting covered props in the upper level of Doc's shop. So I think that concept art we saw was actually the upper level, and the actual store is going to be on the bottom level. Uh, when this is done, it just gets completely filled out on the upper level. And the, yeah, this is all props on the upper level. You can't even shop the upper level. There's the 12 foot taxidermied Wampa that's in there. That's what we saw in the artwork, right? We saw that in the artwork. When the shop does open with Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, shoppers will be able to purchase merchandise in the lower level with Doc watching from a distance. That's right. Okay, so that matches what I saw in other concept artwork. Um, every item in the shop has a story, with some stories more dangerous dangerous than others, according to StarWars.com. That's interesting. Some items are a little... I wonder if there's, like, interactive things you can do with the items in there. And maybe there's something in the comic, which I'll get to later, that that actually jives with what they're saying there. One of the more exciting and interactive experiences coming to the shop is an audio animatronic dock. 
who will be tending to his financial ledgers, answering calls, and surveying his inventory while sitting on an elevated perch within the shop. So you can, like, interact with Doc. This is going to be cool. Uh, during the day, Doc may grow angry when he gets calls from intergalactic criminals trying to stiff him on business deals. However, counting his galactic credits or looking over a bookkeeping ledger are said to brighten his mood. So you can get him in a good mood or you can get him in a bad mood. That's cool. As previously reported, guests will be able to barter with Doc over the price of merchandise with a Disney employee standing by. This is where this Brady McDonald's reporting... I'm. It's not that he reporting wrong. I think he's been giving early information that might be subject to change, which is probably what happened with the overnight waiting thing, because that was reported before the reservation system. So I'm guessing this barter thing is going to be it's it's it, they've been, I've heard about it multiple times. So I think it is real to a certain point. I don't exactly know how that works, like what the logistics of something like that are actually going to be. Because you can't have variable prices on items. You can't, like, charge me so much for a lightsaber and then charge some kid a different price for a lightsaber. Charge some lady, you know? it. People will complain. People, some people will be like, what? You got yours for $150? Mine was $109. Or, you know, or whatever. You can't do that because you're just going to end up causing more trouble than it's worth. So, as far as the bartering and getting different prices, that just, I don't know how they're going to do that. I really don't. Do you have? If you guys have an idea, leave it down below what you think it might be. Um, let's see here. So he's always diligent as to what's going on in the shop, counting his money, making sure that nothing has been taken or missing in his collection. Beatty says that when you go buy something, you can interact with him from time to time, so not always. Mm. It should be noted, McDonald reports, you probably won't get a discount from Doc, and you may end up walking away paying more than the sticker price after haggling with the robotic businessman. I've never known him to give a deal, Beatty said. Doesn't that seem a little weird? Do you end up paying more? It could cost you more? I wonder if there's like a trade-off where it's like, oh, it's going to cost you more, but you get a little something extra and unique. That would be cool. I would pay extra for extra. Uh, according to Imagineers, if the price is right, Doc will be willing to trade anything from his collection. Anything from his collection? Like the Wampa? Or the crate Dragon? No, oh, come on. Come on. Uh, McDonald also reports that during the tour of his theme land, he also received a preview of the action figure, the animatronic figure, which he says is programmed by Amy Goodwin, with questions. Hey, Doc, he thinks you're overcharging. Goodwin told the shopkeeper, can you give him a discount? McDonald says the creature responded in alien tongue, with lips along his two mouths, his side mouths, uh, moving as he spoke. Okay, I'll tell him to go away. So, so there's an interpreter there. That's interesting. From this interaction, it's probably safe to say the animatronic figure will not actually speak to guests, but his personality should be discernible to visitors from his visible mood. Story-wise, he always has a reason to switch between them. He never randomly goes from happy to frustrated. There's always a reason for it. That's cool. According to Goodwin, Doc's responses are built out of blocks of animation clips that combine into a playlist of short scenes. It's not pulling at random. Oh, where to go, where to go? It's not pulling at random, but it still gives the feeling of randomness, Goodwin said. If you sit there and watch, he's never, or there's never going to be an hour that's exactly the same as any other hour that he runs because of how he transfers between those scenes. So it says guests can experience him starting May 31st, which I will be doing. I will be there on May 31st. I am so excited to be part of that 8 a.m. first public group. There's going to be cast previews a couple nights before. That's fine. But for the public, me, yes. I'm excited. I'm very excited. All right. So let's take a look at some of the merchandise. First off, we've got all the legacy lightsabers. Now, disregard in the center where it says Savi's Workshop hand-built lightsabers. We talked about the lightsaber experience in a previous video, but I think I'm going to do another one because we've got more information, and it's kind of intriguing stuff here. So stay tuned. Just make sure, like I said, make sure you subscribe because I'm going to be doing another video on Savi's Workshop with what we know now. But for now, we're going to take a look at all these different legacy lightsabers. And these are kind of like the master replicas. Rumored price that they start at is $109 for the hilts. And again, this is old reporting. This is old reporting from the end of February. Starting at $109 per hilt and $49 for the blade. Now, the blade will work on any of the lightsabers, the custom ones or the legacy. And it's a $49 blade, supposedly. Um, normal size blade, like a good, a good size blade. And it's supposed to be 
battle ready. Has a light inside and there's electronics. So I don't know how battle ready that means. But that's what they said during celebration. Again, take it with a grain of salt. We'll know more in just a few weeks. The first one we've got on the top right corner is Asajj Ventress. Right? That is Asajj Ventress. That's not, unless that's Shock T. But to me, that looks like Asajj Ventress's lightsaber. That's pretty cool. Uh, underneath that, we've got Luke Skywalker. Now, some of these lightsabers have specific or like special features. Uh, this one would be that it has a special adapter for the blade because the emitter actually does get so thin that the blade wouldn't be able to sit in like normal. So it has a special adapter for this one. Um, that's that's pretty interesting. Next, underneath it, we've got Mace Windu. It's very nice. And I like, I like the boxes and the cases that these things come in. There's another look at Mace Windu. You can see it's metal. It's not plastic. That is a metal. Uh, someone who went and actually held one they given, were given like a VIP tour. They described it as heavier than like a Maglite flashlight. I have a, I believe this is an Ultra Sabers. And this isn't quite as heavy as a Maglite, but they said this is heavier in their recollection. Heavier than a Maglite. Interesting. Uh, below that, we've got Kylo Ren. Now, Kylo Ren's special feature is that it comes with two small blades for the side. So you get two extra like mini coated blades. I would imagine that would cost more. I'm going to guess Kylo Ren's lightsaber is going to cost you an extra 50 bucks or something. Again, that's my guess. Uh, there's another view of Kylo's. On the top left, we've got Darth Maul. Now, this is another weird thing. Notice that lightsaber. That's only half of Darth Maul's lightsaber. Where's the rest? You can tell there's like a hole right in the body. You see the emitter, the normal like Darth Maul emitter. But then there's a hole at the bottom. So is it two pieces in there? Does it cost double? Do you have to buy two blades? There's a lot of questions. I imagine you get more, you pay more. All right, underneath that, I see an Imperial symbol. Who's that gonna be? Darth Vader. Darth Vader's lightsaber. That looks cool. I like those uh, red, white, and blue wires coming off the side. That's nice that it has that. I'm used to the toy ones. It doesn't usually have that kind of thing. And then underneath that, we've got the Jedi Temple Guard. A yellow lightsaber. Yellow lightsaber confirmed. So there's gonna be yellow crystals. This is this is cool. And again, that blade knows what color it is based on whose hilt. Uh, so underneath that is Ahsoka Tano. Now notice her. If you notice right there on the right side of the box, it's wider. Let's go back and kind of see one of these other boxes is normal. Um, I don't think the other boxes are wide like hers is. It's very wide. And she has two. One's a shorter one. A Shoto, probably. And then the other one's uh, a little bit longer, normal size hilt. And, again, you have to buy two blades. And I'm going to assume it's going to cost double. Probably $200 or something for that set. Is my guess. Next up, we've got right in the center. Now, whose would you say this is? Is this Anakin's? Because we're in a... This Batu Galaxy's Edge, this is a sequel era thing. And I know that one specifically doesn't have what we know matches in the new Rise of Skywalker trailer, but, but, would you consider that Anakin's, or would you consider that Rey's lightsaber? As another closer look. I, I don't, what would you, like, honestly, what do you, leave it, I want to know. I'm going to put a poll or something, maybe, as a card, we'll see. If not, just comment. Is it Anakin's lightsaber to you, or is it Rey's lightsaber to you? Is it, you know, is this your phone, like, is it because who made it? Or is it by who possesses it? Did you make your car? Did you make your house? Did you make your phone? No. But it's your possession, so you consider it yours. So, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to look at it. That's my, like, way I think of it. So I would say, as of right now, it's Ray's lightsaber. It's the one she uses. All right, so there is a carrying case for the blade. If you buy the big plastic blade, you can get this carrying case. And I mentioned this in a previous video. The uh, arabesque on the side there translates to force wielder, which is kind of cool. Uh, next up, there is a lightsaber clip. I'm going to guess that's 15 to 20 bucks, somewhere in that range. 15, probably. 15. And it will work with either the Legacy or the custom build your own from Savi's workshop across the way. All right, next up, there's another view of all the all the things. Nice little view of all the stuff. Next photo. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. now we're getting into some fun stuff. Kyber crystals. We've looked at these. Again, some of this stuff is going to be a repeat on what I did during my lightsaber video, and I feel like that, it, that needs a redo, so that's why we're gonna make Doc Ondar's its own thing. But look at those things. I initially said I think $7.99 is what I thought those were gonna be. 
I'm going to lower my estimate. I'm going to say $5.99. $4.99 or $5.99 a pop. Because they want you to buy multiple. Ah, I don't know. That $7.99 does sound right. What do you guys think? I think I think like five bucks. I think five bucks. Somebody commented on one of the videos and said, no, they're going to be $4.99. I'm like, hey, you seem pretty confident. But because they're blind bags and you probably have to buy so many, and the one thing I didn't notice before is that black bag. Do you maybe just like fill up the bag? Like, is it you, you know, they used to have these things where you dump rocks in, you weigh it, and you pay per weight. I don't think you're going to pay by weight, but they might like be like, here, fill up the bag with as many kyber crystals as you want. And then you pay for how many you put in there. Maybe, I don't know. I really don't know what to make of it. But there are yellow, there are white, there's purple, and there's green, and there's red. And blue. On the top right, by the yellow one up there, that's not black. Some people have been like, there's a black one, confirm there's black. There's not black. That's blue. I've not seen a black crystal anywhere. So just want to, I don't want to burst your bubble too bad, but it's just, it is what it is. I haven't seen black anywhere. But white is confirmed for Ahsoka. Yellow, confirmed. Jedi Temple Guards have yellow. And I don't know if the Legacy lightsabers open up and you can see the crystal. That would be really nice. But with the custom ones at Savi's, yes, there is a kyber crystal. You change your color with that. There we go. There's a nice little shot of the uh, the red ones. Now, there are multiple of each color. So there will be multiple green. There will be multiple purple. There will be multiple blue, multiple white, multiple yellow. That's why it's blind bag. Because when you put the in multiple red... When you put these, like, the cut will be different. It'll be a different, like, shape. And you don't know what you get until you open it. So there might be some trading that needs to go on in the parks, and that would be cool. I'm going to buy a ton of these. And so I, I hopefully will be able to trade with people and get the ones that I need if they have dupes. I think that's going to be kind of a fun experience to do in Betu, like bartering with other other guests. Uh, but next we've got, there's the Sith ones. Again, multiple Siths. There's a lot of Siths. And what you do is you put them into these holocrons. We've seen this pre uh, promo picture before. There's a Jedi holocron on the left, the blue one, and then a Sith holocron on the right. And when you put it in there and you push the little circle, it gives you knowledge. New knowledge, allegedly. New information is what they said about Star Wars. And the Jedi that's attached to the crystal will give you that information. If you get green, you might get Yoda. Or you might get Qui-Gon. You don't know until you put it in the holocron and try it out. So there's a reason to buy these holocrons, which I am guessing cost 50 bucks. Again, my number might have changed from before, but I've done a little more research into them, and I'm thinking 50. I think 50 is about right for something like that. I hope it's less. I hope it's a lot less. Next up, we've got, this is from Star Wars Celebrations, a woman uh, giving a demonstration. Notice it's green. She put a green crystal, and the blue holocron turned green. And you, you, know, you flip those little things open, kind of like we saw there. And if you saw Star Wars Rebels, that's how we opened them. That was the first time I remember seeing it. I didn't watch a ton of... I watched all of Clone Wars, but I didn't watch it as closely as I did Star Wars Rebels. So, to me, it's Rebels. Alright, there she is doing the demo. There she is holding the Sith Holocron. Looks very cool. Ooh, this is a lot of stuff here. There is a ton, ton of stuff. Big ol' sign, Doc Ondor's Den of Antiquities. Let's start on the top left. Oh, actually, here, let's start with this promo memo. This, this promo image we saw back in late February. And all of this stuff we see here on the shelves now. I do like that book on the left. That book looks really cool. And then we got random Jedi statues, a couple sculptures, a stein. Is that like a beer stein? <laughs> Who knows? So first off, we'll take a look at that statue. It's like a relief statue. I don't know what you'd want to call it. I got it. That's got to be over $100. That thing's big. It looks like it's made of concrete. It's probably very heavy. And I wouldn't want to carry that around the park. Like, I'm guessing it's, like, this big. Probably, like, this big. A big old thing to, like, carry and lug with you. Like, you know, they have to keep that at the front of the park for you or something. I don't know. Who's going to buy that? I'm not. I'm, there's no way I'm buying that thing. It looks heavy. It looks like it's going to put a hole in the wall if you try to hang it. But I'm guessing it's going to be about 150 to $200. And maybe you don't hang it on the wall. Maybe you do just lean it up on a shelf or something. Got to be a big shelf. I don't know. There we got some new statues. Look at that Luke on the top. He looks big. Luke looks like a bigger statue than the heads at the bottom. So we've got Luke. I don't know who that um, Twi'lek is. I don't know who that is. And then I don't know who the other Jedi to the right is. Yeah, I can't really tell. On the bottom, we've got Plo Koon, Yoda. Is that Sassy Tin? And then Mace Windu? I'm going to guess the big Luke is about 89 
maybe 90, maybe 129 even? Those gray statues up top? 50, 60 bucks? Maybe 40. If they're cheap, I don't know what they're made of. That's the hard part about like trying to gauge the pricing on these things. We don't know. Is it plastic? Do they just mass produce them in plastic so they can sell a ton? Because, you know, I don't know many people would be like, oh, I'm going to buy a statue of Luke's head. It's cool, but it's kind of a weird, like, it's a weird thing to have in your house. I don't know. Some some of these items are a little strange. And I love Star Wars, and I love, I love all this stuff, but I don't see myself buying these things. And knowing Disney, if stuff doesn't sell, they're going to get rid of it. They're going to get rid of it for cheap, and they're going to put in stuff that does sell. And unfortunately, the, the truth is, what sells is t-shirts with Galaxy's Edge logo on it. Uh, rose gold galaxy's edge ears you know like that's the stuff that sells at disney parks unfortunately it's stuff like the stuff that's instagrammable is what sells spirit jersey galaxy's edge spirit jerseys that's what sells weird little statues i think i hope they have to be cheap enough that everybody does want one they'll be like you know what i wasn't gonna buy a yoda head statue today but you know what it's actually affordable it's not like a hard rock heavy statue but it's like a nice solid PVC or plastic or something. I don't know. I don't know what material it would be. But I'm hoping that's the route they go because I don't see a ton of people buying them. And if it's taking up space in a shop, even though the shop is kind of more of an experience, it's an attraction in itself. I just don't know what to make of those. Now that box in the middle I do want to mention, I believe that holds a kyber crystal. And it holds a clear white kyber crystal, like a big crystal, like a uh, museum piece kind of like art piece crystal because they have one for the sith and another on the other shelf and it's open uh so next in the very middle we've got the statue that's on top of maz kanata's castle i'm gonna guess 129 maybe two i don't know again we don't know what these are made of we don't know how good a quality it is all right we've got the headdress that fancy looking helmet headdress and i'll be honest i don't know you guys tell me tell me down below school me on this one I don't know whose headdress that is. Is that that's got to be a Clone Wars thing? Because it, it it could be Amidala, but I don't I don't specifically recall Padme wearing that headdress, that sundial looking thing. Like what? Doesn't look like a sundial. It looks like the sun or something. I don't know who that is. Just comment, school me on that one, please. Uh, next up, underneath that, we've got some jewelry. We've got the necklace that Kira wore on Solo. We've got uh, an armband underneath it. It's like these gold-looking armband, probably. I'm going to guess that's Padme. I'm not going to be a good gauge on this jewelry business. Honestly, I'm not. I was looking at necklaces and stuff on Disney parks. They range from 40 bucks to thousands. I don't know. I don't know how... I don't know how to gauge... I imagine that Kira one is really nice. It probably does cost like $900 or something. It's probably like very fine metal, you know? Um, the, was it Hazy and Smelt necklaces from uh, Rose Tico and her sister Paige? Those are cool. I imagine like maybe you get a set or you buy one each. They're probably sold as a set for you to give to like a friend for what, 80 bucks? 90 bucks? They're probably real metal. Real Hazy and Smelt, whatever Hazy and Smelt is. There's the ring, there's Rose's ring. That, a lot of people are going to want that ring. That's a cool ring. I want that ring, actually. That, if it does a little thing like that, I want that. I'm going to guess $69. Again, I don't have much of a basis on the jewelry. I'm not a jewelry person. I mean, my ears are pierced, but I use plastic gauges. Like, you know, I have a wedding ring because I'm married. Um... That's it. That's like the extent of my jewelry knowledge. This necklace on the back, I don't know whose that is. I'm going to guess Padme again. Maybe Satine. I don't know. I don't know who... Yeah, I don't know whose that is, but it looks expensive. All right. Let's take a look at the next one here. So there's some artwork. I like this artwork. And it looks like it's embossed or carved almost. But there's Leia and there's Princess Amidala. Queen Amidala, not Princess. Princess Leia. Queen Amidala. And there's also some statues. I don't know if those are statues that are like pewter, not pewter, but what's the uh, plaster? It could be like white plaster, but then I imagine they would break really easily. 
They don't look glossy, so they don't look like porcelain or anything like that. I'm I'm just guessing they're plastic. I know it's supposed to be a nice, like, higher-end shop, but who who really is going to buy a lot of... I mean, Leia and Amidala, those statues, I think, are a little cooler than some of the other ones, like the random Jedi. And I like the random Jedi. I like Plo Koon, and I like they went a little deep dive, Saucy Tin. But realistically, how many of those are they going to sell? Leia and Amidala? Yeah, they're going to sell a ton of those. Sure. Even that artwork. Yes, I want that artwork. I put that up on my walls. That's really cool artwork. But I can't gauge the pricing on that because I don't know what quality it is. I don't know, is it a just you know, like a print and they make a billion of? Or is it, you know, something that's really fine, like hand handmade? I, what do you think? What do you guys think? All right, next up on the Sith side, there's a giant Palpatine statue. That, it's got to be a couple hundred bucks. Two hundred, two ninety-five, three hundred dollars That's a big one. And I... I just feel like if they're going to go with Palpatine, it's going to be nice. It's going to be really well made. And that one's going to be expensive. That's going to, they're not, that's not going to be plastic at all. That's going to be a big statue that you got to like mail home. Uh, next to it are a bunch of other, I'm guessing, Sith statues. I don't re really recognize many of them. I believe one of them is from Palpatine's office, if I'm correct. I think that's what it is. Who knows? Uh, again, if, leave your comments down below. Correct. Feel free to correct me on any of these things that I get wrong. I'm doing this kind of on the fly. Uh, underneath that is a looks to be a Sith statue, that weird triangle, pointy-looking thing. Oh, that's that's pretty cool looking for whatever it is. And then there's the Kyber crystal in the center between Snoke and the weird pointy trophy Sith thing. I don't know what that thing is. I'm gonna guess hundred bucks on the pointy thing. Kyber crystal. Yeah, probably 100 and 100 to 130. Snoke statue. I actually really like the Snoke. Um, Snoke statue maybe 89, 150. Some it's the range could be anywhere on this stuff, man. Anywhere. All right, next up. Oh, this is an awkward one. This one I feel a little gross about. It's like a job of the hut. They're like ancient carving of a a hut. And he's got, like, ladies there, and there's people... I... Who would buy this? It's... I mean, it's cool. It's in-world. Like, you could... I, I just don't know who would actually buy that and put that on a shelf, put that in there. But it's... That looks expensive. That's... That's a... That's... I'm gonna guess three twenty-five, three hundred and twenty-five dollars on that. That's my guess. I don't know. This Some of this stuff has really stumped me. Okay, now this is going to be a little easier. This is a little, something a little more, more my speed. We have a Jedi Temple mask with a display stand. That's a nice mask. 185. 185 is my guess. The mug, the, the Stein, 25 bucks. 25 to 30 bucks. That's my guess on that. Set of patches, 10 to 15. Jedi gear set. It looks plasticky, more probably toy kind of thing for kids. I'm gonna guess 20 bucks. Um, the lightsabers. No, those are, they're just like the train. I don't know if I have them back there. I've got a training light. You wanna see this? I've got a training lightsaber just like that. See, look, I've got, this is, this lightsaber is literally, it, I mean, it is those lightsabers just with a different paint job on it. Like, oh, I forgot how to do this. What do I do? Pull down. There we go. This is the Jedi Academy, Training Academy lightsaber that you can get over by Star Tours. Uh, it's actually a really nice lightsaber. It won't go out unless you release the thing. It's got a belt clip just like those do. Was it 16 bucks? I think? 12, 12, 14, 99, something like that? That's what I'm guessing those will be. Maybe a little bit more because they're weathered and look a little nicer. Uh, we talked about the crystals. I don't know what this thing over on the far right is. It's like a Jedi... What is that picture? I don't know what the heck that thing is. That's really interesting looking. It... Is it a puzzle? It might be a puzzle. I don't know what the heck that thing is. It almost looks like a hollow projection. It might be like a Jedi hollow projector. Um, I can't, I really can't tell what that thing is on the right, on the bottom right. I can't tell if it's a statue or it's like a circle. Who knows? Uh, but let's take a look at something cool on that Jedi book. Oh, actually, you know what? Behind, right behind the Jedi mask or the, yeah, the temple guard mask. Did you notice there's costumes? 
there are costumes. There's costumes of Leia. A Yoda costume. Like Yoda ears. It's a little not in world. And then there's like more robes. These are different than the other robes we saw before. So there's going to be more costumes that we haven't even seen yet. I like, the, I mean, even, look, the Leia one has a wig. It looks to be a pretty high quality costume. Look, the belt looks nice. I gotta guess, 89 bucks for just the cloak. For Yoda, that's probably a kid's costume. I'm hoping that's a kid's costume. 100 bucks. 120. With the ears. You know? Uh, the Leia costume, probably 149. It looks really nice. Uh, maybe even two. If it has a wig. Maybe even two. Yeah, I don't know. And the belt looks good. Maybe two. Maybe two hundred dollars. All right. So there's another shot of the stuff on the table. So that thing on the right is not a hollow projector. I just don't know what that thing. If you guys know what that thing on the bottom right is, let me know. Let me know. Uh, I am seeing a little bit clearer that the Jedi gear set has a couple, like three different pieces in it. One of them is the old Gillette Razor um, midi chlorian reader. There's also a Comtech for the Episode One toys. Uh, so that's kind of cool to see that in the top right of that Jedi gear box. Uh, looks like there's some kind of communicator thing to the left, and then I can't tell what's on the bottom of that. But next up, ooh, so look at that book, that Jedi book. This is something I want to show you. The front page, when you open that Jedi book, is this, like, key. And it's, you know, an alphabet, an alphabet key. Those are not Arabesh. Those are not the regular Arabesh Star Wars language. But... The same, I think it was the same day, they released uh, a panel, there was a whole panel at Celebration on the new game coming out later this year, Jedi Fallen Order. EA's making a new game called Jedi Fallen Order, and one of the teaser pictures that they posted was this. Now those characters look mighty familiar. They're very much in the same style. And to add to that, not only was this lightsaber surrounded by characters that are in that same style, but if you go to Sabi's workshop and make your own custom lightsaber, and I think you go with the ancient one, it's like something, I think it's defense, I forget what exactly it is, but it's the one that's more ancient. The lightsaber has characters very much like this. Very much like they are right here in this book. So I'm going to have to buy this book. I'm going to have to get one of those lightsabers and kind of figure it out. I, I'm pretty excited about that. It's kind of neat. And I wonder what else we can decipher throughout... Doc Ondar's using that book. Alright, next up we've got the Sith table. A lot of cool stuff. The Holocron, we said it's probably about 50 bucks. That giant urn looking thing, the spiky looking urn black thing next to Maul. That's gotta be 200 bucks. 189 is my guess. I don't think it does anything, but it looks expensive. Um, as for those books, this one is a Sith book. I don't think I priced it out. I'm gonna guess 30 bucks. It's a journal, it's like mostly blank pages. I'm gonna guess 30 bucks, because it's nice and it's like hard bound on the outside. Uh, the Darth Maul statue, they can probably get away with 249 if it's well made. If it's cheap, probably 79. And that's not, I know it's not cheap, but like, if it's cheaper made, and it's, it looks like a really well sculpted Darth Maul statue. Darth Maul's a pretty popular character. I think they can squeeze people for 80 bucks, but it's probably gonna be way more like 249, 349 for a really nice well made statue like that. Uh, we talked about the kyber crystals. I'm going to guess five bucks now. I don't know if that ball in the middle, that globe ball thing, is actually for sale. Or if that's just decoration for the table. The patches, I'm going to guess between 10 and 15 bucks. And then that other mug. Well, there's a mug on the Sith side. Or on the Jedi side. So maybe that mug is for sale. Does anybody know if that mug has any importance? Doesn't to me. But... 20 to 25 bucks <laughs> just for a random mug <laughs> it's late i've lost it okay there's a promo image of all that stuff there you can see the uh, kyber crystal a little bit better see it's out of its box it's a red kyber crystal yeah that's what it looks nice so i think that's going to be in that higher under 100 maybe 120 range something like that like 89 to 129 range and there's that sith statue trophy thing better look at the statues What's next? Oh, there's a glass case. We're almost to the end. Thank you for sticking around this far. We're almost to the end. Uh, let's start at the top left. There's a Kalikuri. That is from Star Wars Rebels. That is Hera's family. It's like a way they keep track of the family. I think each member builds a piece. Something like that, if I remember correctly. 
Um, and it's kind of like their Leku. You know, the the head, the twi- she's a Twi'lek. So I, I think maybe that's part of like the history of it. But that is specifically Harris and Dula's Calicuri, which Thrawn got a hold of on Star Wars Rebels. And speaking of Thrawn, underneath there's Thrawn's rank badge. It's really cool, and it's in a nice frame. I'm gonna guess the Calicuri is $129, $150, $149. It's wood. It's nice. I I I would probably pay like $200 for that thing. If it's really well made and it's like perfect, I'd say $200 for that thing. Um, The rank badge, I'm gonna say $79 because it's like nice and it's framed. $80 sounds about right. Let's go to the Grievous hat, the Grievous helmet. That's got to be $150, $200, right? It looks cool. It looks good. At least $200. Now for these statues. These I don't know if they are they statues. Are they more like vinyl figures? But all of these little creatures are from the Hollow Chest game. Dejeric. Dejeric. I want to buy them. Not all of them, but I want to buy at least two. Just for the purpose of when you ride Smuggler's Run, the Millennium Falcon ride. You get to sit inside the, the little lobby area of the Falcon. Where the little couch... And the hollow chest table are, you get to hang out in there for like two minutes, two, three minutes, while the next like vehicle moves in and you know your cockpit rolls in so you can go into the cockpit and then your cockpit moves out of the way. All the while you think you're you know you're flying it, but that's how they cycle more people through there. Is each group gets like two or three minutes in the middle of the Millennium Falcon. So I want you can take pictures, you can see all this stuff. I wanna buy at least two of those. I'm not probably won't do it on my first trip, but I want to. Um, just to take a picture with them on the hollow chest table because I think that's really cool Depending on how much like what those actually cost. They look hyper detailed They look really really well detailed. I don't see them being less than 50 bucks a pop But they're probably around 90 to 100 each if they're really well made and high quality All right, there's another view of all of them you can see things a little bit better. I Do want those statues? I really do, but they're going to be expensive. They have to be, right? All right. Oh, there's a picture. This is one thing I wanted to talk about real quick. Doc Ondar himself from the comic book. That's a variant cover. Um, the next one comes out May 22nd. I actually have that cover right here. I got all the covers minus the cast ones. Uh, but this comic is interesting. If you haven't picked up the comic yet, do so. Do yourself a favor. Pick up the comic. You can go to any comic. Like, don't buy it online. Buy it from a local comic book store because it's helps local businesses. They're run by families, usually, you know, moms and dads of people with kids who are in your neighborhood and that three or four bucks you can spend on a book or if you want to buy all the covers, spend 20 bucks or whatever. It goes to help local businesses and I, I would love it if you did that, but it's a good read. Also, like, not only is that cool to help out local businesses, but it is a good read. I'm going to give you some spoilers. It starts out with, like, a story of this guy landing on Batuu. I'm not, not super spoilers, but... This guy landing on Batu, and they're trying to, like, this group is trying to pull one over on Doc Ondar. There's Doc Ondar right in there. And they see that there's a baby Sarlacc, a, like a Sarlacc pit monster, a baby one, inside. There's, like, a, just inside his den, just sitting there, like, in a glass case, a baby one. And they're like, well, how'd you get this thing? And so he tells them a story of how he got that thing. And it happens to be... That Han Solo and Chewie were hired by Doc Ondar to go get a bunch of baby Sarlaccs. And that's what the rest of the story is. So, I don't know if what we see in these comics is supposed to be, like, really hinting at what's going to be inside there. Like, is there going to be a glass case with Doc Ondar? Or with a baby Sarlacc inside there? I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, here's, I think I might be able to find a picture of one here. There we go. So there he is, Han Solo's leaning up against that little Sarlacc. It's a little baby Sarlacc. I don't know what to... I, I hope it's... In, I really hope that we can go up to that thing. And what it... I hope the, the point of the comic book series... I hope what it is, is to make Batu Black Spire Outpost that much more real. And we know the backstories of this. Because I read the comic when I get to Doc Ondar's Den of Antiquities. I'll know the story of how that little Sarlacc got there. You know, 
Like, I think that's what the comic book's going to do each issue. We'll find out next week what issue two promises. But it's going to be a continuation of that first story. And then there's probably going to be some other, like, backstory they tell. And then, you know, it, it seems to be a, an interesting way that they're doing it. But lastly, we had some pictures come out just the other day from D23. These are actual pictures from inside of Doc Ondar's. So it says, Relics of the Old Republic. Let me see if I can bring these pictures in a little tighter. There we go. That's better. Relics of the Old Republic. Doc Ondar sells artifacts featuring notable Jedi and mysterious Sith. So there's some of those statues. Now, those I don't believe are for sale. Those are just decorations. You see the barrier. Um, I think those are just for the wall. That's it. Ooh, a Nexu. That's really cool looking. Again, I don't think it's for sale. But it is a really cool decoration. Look at those teeth. No, I... Oh. That looks great. Um, and I think I... Is that is that it? Is that all that showed up on here? I think I've got a couple more photos that I can go through. Let me see what we got here. All right. So after the next two... Ooh, we've got this one. It says, coming out ahead, taxidermic heads will watch guests from afar and dock Andar's Den of Antiquities. So we've got a Tauntaun. We've got a Corellian Hound. And what is that yak looking thing? Is that a moof? Is that like a moof milker? Or is that, or is that a, a nerf? Is that a nerf? Is that what? I, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Uh, next up, we have an IG-88, or an IG model, just chilling inside of Doc Gondar's. And then we've got some helmets. And again, these are all things that you can just see on the walls. I'm stoked for Doc Gondar's. I'm going to do... There, I've got a couple more videos. There's a couple weeks until Galaxy's Edge opens. So I'm going to be doing one on the food. But do you want me to break it up by restaurant? Do you want me to do one just on like the snacks? Like the blue milk or the popcorn? Make that one video. And then do Oga's Cantina because you got a lot of drinks. Or do you like these longer videos? It's like a 40 minute video. Do you like these longer videos where we look at all the details and I just ramble? Or would you like me to do a little bit quicker hit on the food and be like, no, this is just Oga's. This is just the snacks. This is just the other place. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to revisit what we know about Savi's workshop so that come may 31st we have all the info that we can gathered into one place on one video and shared with you guys guys i want to know what your favorite thing you saw in today's video was what's the one thing you have to pick up or two things or three things but what's the stuff that you have to pick up from doc ondar's den of antiquities there's a lot for me there's a lot that i'm gonna end up picking up uh, lightsabers of course i gotta i gotta pick up at least one of the legacies i don't know who but i gotta pick up at least one i'm gonna pick up the holocrons both holocrons all of the crystals there's so much man that book the jedi book so i can translate things so much guys it's been a long long video it's very late at night i gotta edit this thing you know i love you till next time don't forget to subscribe and do the like and all the good stuff share my vids please it helps a lot what may the force have with you and goodbye forever as always thank you guys so much for watching there's a ton of channels here on youtube but you chose to watch mine and I appreciate that. If you want to watch more, click one of the videos on the side. I've got playlists, plenty of new Star Wars stuff, Disney parks, Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, all the toys you could think of. You name it, we got it here at the Dano channel. Love you. Till next time. May the force be with you. Have good. Bye. Forever.